came up with a project uh, to discuss the experiences of Winnipeg's Indigenous youth and with that we developed relationships with seven organizations to kind of um, mirror the idea of the seven sacred laws. Sarah's Body Productions has begun the process of creating reconciliation through theatre. Their plan is to provide Indigenous youth with artistic outlets to learn, reconnect, and express their stories, thoughts, and feelings. We were working with Children of the Earth High School, with Marymount School, uh, the Knowles Center, Indigenous Leadership Development Institute, Inc., uh, Manitoba Youth Center, as well as Wabung, and uh, Nidinawe Drop-In Center for Youth as well. Getting local Indigenous artists and creators to mentor youth has been a key factor throughout the project. So um, they talked about some interest around fashion and uh, as a designer in town here, I thought about how can I connect reconciliation with, with fashion and how do I kind of amalgamate those two things because you really don't think that there, there is a connection. So the message I wanted to relay with these students was um, choices in fashion, supporting Indigenous artists and really just um, giving them some awareness about the the pollution and all the environmental effects that fast fashion has today. So yeah, that was kind of my connection. I gave them a list of indigenous designers to, you know, hopefully follow, um, possibly, you know, support in the future. So that was kind of the connection that I made for them and the message that I was trying to get across. That's great. And then if you put the bars, are you, what are you thinking for your stitching? Do you have any ideas yet? Yes. So let's talk about your um, piece. About? My piece actually got inspiration from my partner here mm -hmm. and he told me to do a wilted maple leaf just to resemble how um, um, the indigenous peoples here in Canada mm -hmm. it's like you know, people think that we're dying off or we don't exist but like we're still here and I want to like resemble, I'm not done it, but I would like to like put um, prison bars like along the borders here. So it would be like a Canadian flag, but it would be my version of it. First of all, these kids are so talented, it's unbelievable. The messages that they're relaying, um, it just blew my mind these last two days. So um, I'm really excited to see how they utilize it in the final public production. We're going to stitch them all together today and then I think as they decide the other organizations what they produce, then they'll kind of figure out what, how it'll be used in the final production. But I'm really looking forward to I'll be there for sure. <laughs> Pieces of a larger story are being created all over the city, all to be woven together in a final theatrical production in spring of 2020. Well, right now I'm doing a star collage. I chose the star uh, collage because uh, I like the idea of putting diamonds together, bringing things together, uh, working in a group. And I wanted to create something really beautiful. Um, many of these kids that come in here, they, they are exposed to quite a bit of uh, abuse and neglect. And, and uh, I don't think anything says resilience than the kids that come in here. And every day, despite everything they've gone through, and they still come in every day. So there's a lot of hope, a lot of strength and courage. So uh, what we decided to do was a little bit of um, epoxy resin work. So I gathered some local flowers and we pressed them and dried them. And they went around the neighborhood and collected some little rocks or pieces of glass, something that signifies like their place in the north end. And then we um, stuck it in these little molds and put the epoxy in and luckily it dried. So today we're just making some keychains or necklaces. 
So what about this project though? How's it been for you? It's been it's been good, you know. It's been you know keeping me out of trouble, keeping keeping me busy. Yeah. Okay. Like kind of whole bunch. What color do you want? <laughs> what I always want is just to relax and have fun making art. Um, but we did have a theme to work with about the experience in the North End. So when we're relaxing and having those moments, we throw in some conversation about their lived experience here. I like to see kids talk, talk openly about what they're going through. My specific involvement is to um, do, do a writing workshop with the youth and sort of help them begin ideas, help them begin their stories, but I also did a lot of instruction on theory in terms of how to develop narrative, how to develop character, how to develop, you know, plot, theme, character growth, mm -hmm. and some of the devices we use such as echoing and foreshadowing and the three layers of conflict in a story. So not too much theory, but enough to give them some parameters, guidelines, and not rules, they're guidelines. And then just uh, the first day we developed some ideas collectively as a group, mm -hmm. which wound up being pulled right from their experiences. Reconciliation is the overall theme of the whole project, so we discussed that in abstract terms initially. Storytelling is a huge part, because I, I kind of think of it as like in, in a space, in a room. So this room is all about truth, and then you've got other rooms going off. And off of that room of truth is reconciliation. Well, if you don't walk through the truth, you're never going to get to the door for reconciliation. I think art is really important and almost gets overlooked when it comes to um, building leadership capacity, um, professional development, um, communication skills, all those things when you think of First Nations governance, that's um, some of the key roles and um, experience that you need to acquire over time. And art is um, something that really would add to, to it all. I think there's something there. It really launched me into my career. I, I find the project very inciting, exciting that, that the youth are getting to have this kind of guidance and direction at this time in their life, I think is very important and it should be available to all kids. So we're here at Wabung and um, it's a community organization and we work together with some of the young women who come through the um, drop-in center and we created this tree. We actually went out and foraged this tree. <laughs> Maybe that shouldn't be on CV, I don't know. Um, but we, what we did is we tied the four directions colors on it and like kind of grounded it in this space and it's just really a space where people can come and, and just like leave little bits of wishes or thoughts or ideas um, out on the tree so that they can kind of express themselves that way. It's really invigorating to see the energy coming from the youth and the possibilities that they see going forward. I'm a shy person, but I do like drama and acting. I feel like reconciliation uh, and like being here at MTYP, has, like they have a lot to do with one another because I'm always feeling accepted and I'm always having a lot of friends and I see so many familiar faces that I keep coming back because of those familiar faces and I just, I feel, I feel like I belong and I, I, I just, I feel like I belong. Yeah. Reconciliation to me is like understanding both sides but like what Indigenous people had to face, like the struggles they faced and are still facing today and not like sugarcoating or censoring any of it. And like 
being fully aware. Just treat everyone with respect and talk to everyone that doesn't know about Canada's past and teach them so they can just be better people. So the next steps is an interactive event at the Forks. Um, there's going to be a youth-led promenade. Um, following that, we're going to have the performance of Song, song of Damon, sorry. Um, and then after, we're going to do a conversation circle, uh, which we hope to get the youth involved with the elders um, and just create a community event uh, with Song of Damon. Do you know what's the that's going to be about a little bit? Or? Well, Song and Damon right now, it's a whole experience that's coming together, especially with the performance. I myself, um, we're just kind of figuring out how is this all going to work? How is this all going to come together? Um, we have a whole bunch of youth stories. Um, and right now our writers are, are compiling that into the script, which is Song and Dewin. and it's really a chance for the youth to get their voice out there, what reconciliation means to them. Um, there's going to be singers, dancers, um, performance uh, through the script. Um, and really, it's just a chance for, for the youth to get their voices heard. been many youth that have impacted me personally um, just hearing about their experiences and their life and um, I've overall taken away from this project and the youth is that the youth the indigenous youth of Winnipeg are ready to reconcile they want a place to learn and speak and forgive and forgiveness was a, a big thing for me um, as growing up as an urban indigenous youth myself. Um, I was angry. I'm still quite angry. And hearing that kind of forgiveness come from the youth was very eye opening for me. And it gave me a lot of hope. When um, I was invited, I just, I was like, okay, well, I'll come do it because it's an important thing, like it's that reconciliation, right? And um, that residential school. I've been to other places like Toronto, Montreal to meetings to try and support. I just couldn't do it because of the horrific stories. So listening to these younger generation here, they're so brilliant, they're so sharp. Like we didn't have that when we were young. And just listening to them, I was just amazed. Like, I told them, I said, you know, you're our future. And you're the ones who's going to hopefully change this world for better. <laughs>